Welcome to Blackwell, everybody. How many is ready to worship today? Stand with us, worship with us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Just enjoy the worship. Just enjoy this free spirit of God today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Um, we'll read from Deuteronomy 4, and, or, yeah, 20 verse 4, sorry. And then we're going to go into focus prayer. Uh, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Jesus, we thank you for this day, God. Lord, I ask you to move in this place today, Lord. Lord, forgive us for anything we've done that's not of you this week, God. Lord, I ask you to give us victory, Lord, over our enemies, Lord. Lord, victory over addiction, Lord. Victory over depression, Jesus. Oh, victory over anxiety. Victory over disease. Victory over sickness, God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, we praise you, Lord. Lord, just pour out a blessing over this church today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you're in the presence of Jesus, every wall can come down. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Because if you said it, will we believe it? If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, will we believe it? If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we got it. If you said it, in the name of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Go ahead and raise your hands right now. Yes, hallelujah. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the glory, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he's seeking you. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You deserve all the glory, Lord. You deserve all the honor, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
need today would like to be prayed for, I invite you to come right now. We'll anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord.
Everybody giving God some praise. For he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Is there anybody else we can pray for? Anybody else? Holy Ghost is beginning to move right now. The Holy Ghost is beginning to move right now. He is In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Come on, receive your miracle. Receive your blessing. Receive your healing. Receive your peace. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, can you tell him how much you love him? Can you tell him how much you love him? <laughs> yeah, that's praise. That's praise. Just tell him how much you love him. <laughs> tell him how, how great he is and how big he is and that he can do anything. He can do the impossible. Yes. For nothing is impossible with God. Ooh, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All over the house, all over the house, all over the house. You've been praying for a miracle. You've been praying for deliverance. You've been praying for strength. The Holy Ghost is in the room. The Holy Ghost is in the room. Raise your hands and say, I believe God. I believe God is able. My God is able.
We had a great time yesterday, and I want to thank everybody for being involved, that was involved, for the, for the food and for the trunks and the kids that came out. And those of you that invited people, thank you very much. It was our, uh, this year's biggest event as far as reaching the lost, and we had a tremendous group of people come out that we had never met. People that came back that we hadn't seen for years in the, in, uh, in the line. And it was, it was awesome. There was one young lady, I didn't even know who she was. It wasn't until after it was all over and done. And I mean, we was home that I even found out that she was there. And apparently she was right in front of me and I didn't even know it. But she hadn't been here in 10 years changed that much and I didn't know it. but man what a that's awesome brought her child and uh, that's the kind of thing that trunk or treat does it's not a celebration of Halloween I could care less about Halloween right I want to see young people get a chance I want to celebrate something with them that gives them a chance hallelujah to know Jesus praise the Lord and if they think of Blackwell and they only think, man, that's a fun place to be, that's okay with me because I don't know about you, but I like to go to fun places. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I think it's awesome. You guys did a fabulous job. The trunks were amazing. Brother John had put in electrical over there at the, uh, at the shelter house. We had 12 crock pots running on one 20 amp breaker. Praise the Lord. And we had lights going as well. We're going to do more on that, but we got us some power over there. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, man, I can't say enough about all of you. It's, I, I, don't, I want to be careful not to point out a whole lot of people, but um, there, was, there was a crew over there working underneath the shelter house, making sure the food was in preparation. Thank you, Sister uh, uh, Caitlin and, and um, Brandy. Thank you. And, uh, and also, Sister Susie Hendershot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Back after a two-year hiatus where she went to live with her daughter up in Indianapolis, and she finally said, I've got to get back to Bedford. And she is back in Bedford now, and we're so glad that she's back at Blackwell. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're about to take our offering. Can you prepare for that? Praise God. Praise the Lord, church. Um, as we prepare, I wanted to give some announcements. 
And um, as you go ahead and prepare your offering. I'm going to give these announcements, then we'll let Pastor pray over the offering. And after you give your offering, if you're part of the choir, please go ahead and come up for choir because we're going to have choir immediately following offering. So um, really quickly, just wanted to let you know we will not have choir practice after church today since we did have choir practice this morning and we are um, having choir during service. So there will be no practice after church today. Um, we are going to have a special service. So we've talked a little bit about how November every year is family month. And family month is exciting. We do a lot of different things to bring families together, bring the church together as a family because we are a family, right? We are a family of believers and we support one another. We love one another. This Wednesday night, we're going to have hot cocoa and fireside worship outside. Um, so dress accordingly, dress warm, casual. Um, we're going to have hot cocoa and we're going to have some worship and some word around the fire on Wednesday night, um, as well as several other things coming up in November. We have our annual Thanksgiving dinner will be our Sunday fun day event this month, and that will be next Sunday, so one week from today on the 6th. So plan to be a part of that. We do have a sign-up sheet for food, and I can't remember who's taking that. Keisha is taking names um, to sign up. So it's a full Thanksgiving feast. So whatever you'd bring to Grandma's house on Thanksgiving, um, if that's your specialty, we would love for you to bring that and share it with us for our church Thanksgiving dinner on Sunday. Um, we have ladies' Bible study coming up next week on the 8th. Not this week, but next week. Um, and then we have some guest speakers lined up for the month that are going to be fantastic. They're going to pour into us. Don't miss a service this month. I challenge you, don't miss a service this month, and you will not regret it. You'll be glad that you made it a point to be here because there's going to be a lot going on. Check your Blackwell Church app. Add those things to your calendar so that you can be a part of all of those things. Um, but do plan to be a part of our, our Thanksgiving dinner next Sunday um, and see Keisha to sign up to bring something for that. Choir, please come. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and take the offering as the choir comes. I wanted to share a scripture with you out of uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure as you met, or you measure, with all it shall be measured to you again. So what you give, you're going to receive. Praise the Lord. And when you give love and mercy and goodness, you're going to receive those kind of things. But this is, this is, this is give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. So that principle is definitely a financial principle, a principle that what you give, God will multiply, and he will give it back to you, but it won't just come from God. It'll come from men. So the things that you're doing, your jobs, your, your resources, your, uh, your, your efforts that you're doing with your money, God's going to multiply it. And so you might as well look for a blessing coming your way when you're faithful to the house of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have an offering still yet, please bring it right now in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. As you all know, COVID changed a lot of things, didn't it? One thing COVID did, it shut down our choir. <laughs> and we had it for Christmas. Um, and that was, that's all we've had, or Easter, Easter, I think. Um, but we're beginning choir again. So this is our first really song. But we have some new singers. And we also have Sister Stephanie on the piano. And we have Brother John on the bass guitar. We have Brianna and Caitlin singing, which don't usually sing. So we're excited that they're, they joined us to sing. Um, so... Be excited with us. We're excited about the choir. If you'd like to join, we're all singing for Jesus together and learning harmony. All right. So I speak victory.
Oh, let's all stand in the church today. Just stand with me. Begin to raise your hands and call out that precious name of Jesus. There's victory in his name. Oh, there's victory in his name. Jesus. Just call out the name. Just call it out. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Jesus, so we worship you. So, uh, Sister Keisha, are you going to play your video first? Okay, great. We're about to transition into the pastor appreciation part of our service. Uh, we're so excited to uh, have this opportunity to celebrate Pastor and Diana. So, we're going to start off with a video so you guys can be seated. And thank you. Someone that preaches to a church. Yes, the pastor is of the um, church. Someone that preaches for the church. Kinky. A pastor is somebody that preaches the word of God to all the followers to enlighten their hearts. A preacher. Someone that the church. Pastures, um, a pastor is what 
um, uh, talks while everybody's watching. Some of my faces had to shake. A pastor is someone who preaches to the church the word of God. A man that watches over a church and prays for a church. Um, somebody who teaches you the, the Lord, who helps you more understand him. his stuff. Pray. He goes to church to praise the Jesus. Pastor prays to God every day. Probably get used to the rest I don't know actually. Probably read the Bible, pray, and watch TV. Goes to church and um, talks. Uh, pray. Um. Well, I don't know what Brother Bolin does every day, but I know on some days, most of the time, sometimes other people do. He comes and preaches the word of God, but on other days, he might pray. I don't know. Reads the Bible and prays. Prays after either someone has been hurt like if you see him driving or just pray when you wake up or pray when you go to sleep i don't know um, um this might be macaroni and cheese probably ice cream probably like a salad or that one time we had that like nacho bar where you could like choose the meat and you could choose the toppings <laughs> and yeah if they need a break because they do because they do a really good job um can i get um can i get baptized i'm not sure I think I would ask them if they needed anything, any help around the church or anything. Where do you go get, get uh, chickens? Um, how to help people get them in cause and cult to where like you can help people like be able to like, let's see if they get to the Holy Ghost. What is it like to be a pastor? Um, I ask them both, what do you want for Christmas? What's it like being a pastor and a pastor's wife? What is your favorite color? A lot, I'm guessing. A long time. Every day. I think Pastor reads the Bible at least maybe in maybe two or one hours a day. A bunch. And how long Pastor reads the Bible in a day? I'm gonna have to say like six hours. Um probably every every day, maybe. A lot. Every day. Well, I think in the morning probably is like one hour, afternoon, maybe two hours. Night, maybe one hour. Just probably get really tired. So, yeah. A hug. Because they're great pastels. Um, a praise of God. We give them a Bible. 
Um, if I could give the pastor any gift, I would give him my help in, in working at the church or anywhere. Anywhere that he wants me to help. A Tesla. Maybe a car or something? <laughs> I can't really think of one. Ice cream. Um, the love from everybody in the world. I mean, depends on how much money I have. But if I had saved up a lot of money, I probably, not that they would need it, but iPhones. 14s, even though they're really expensive. P-A-S-T-O-R. Uh-huh. P... P... I don't know. P... A... Wait, no. P-A-S-T-R. P-A-S-T-O-R. P-A-S-T-O-R. Pastor Wolin. I don't know. Uh, who's my favorite pastor that I've been with? I think Pastor Bowen. Pastor Bowen. Pastor Bowen. You can have the box. To help us um, preach the, the name of God. Because um, of the church, the church wasn't existed without a pastor. To preach for our church. Um, so they can help spread, spread the, the gospel. To uh, people that don't know. To teach us the gospel. To help. Because if we didn't have a pastor, we probably wouldn't be able to go to church. And we, like, if we didn't have pastors, then we couldn't, like, we couldn't go to church and we couldn't learn about God. So they can talk in church so, so that we can learn about God. We have pastors to teach us about the Lord. <laughs> Don't use that. Don't use that. Because they need to preach to us. Because pastors teach us how to learn about God and to give us free food.
That video was so cute. That was from Kids Jam, if you didn't gather that. <laughs> Good job. Um, the youth is getting ready to come, but while they're doing that, I wanted to just mention that we're so excited that David and Grace are here with us today. Um, when the event planning team got together and we're like, what do we get, Pastor and Diana? I promise it was basically in unison. The babies. What she would want the babies. <laughs> so uh, we're really thankful that David and Grace were able to uh, come out. David's going to share a word with us a little later. Um, but they're sacrificing some time at their home church in Medora. So um, if you haven't talked to them, be sure to talk to them before they leave and kiss on those babies. Well, from afar. Or in a, don't kiss them, but you know what I mean. So when we talked to the youth about uh, what they wanted to give to Pastor and Diana for uh, Pastor Appreciation, they decided on a skit. So we were about to perform a skit for you guys. And we had to throw this together pretty quickly, but they're proud of it. And they, they really liked what they've came up with here. So uh, laugh along with them. Hey guys, uh, what are you doing? Second, uh, Pastor Appreciation. Oh, the video. Oh, bam. Oh yeah, it's it's Pastor Appreciation Month. Uh, but why the bacon? It's pretty awesome. It is the best. There's nothing better than bacon. And it reminds me that there is also nothing better than great pasta. Think about like myths, bacon myths. They're always like throwing out these spiritual bits, like that make it like life a little more tastier, just a little more tasty. Okay, uh, well, you've really thought this through. As we love bacon, who doesn't love bacon? We love our pasta as well. I put some on my pasta. And you're getting a whole year of free bacon bits. No, 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 That's great, but I, I can't help but notice that you're all wearing uh, suspenders and, and suit jackets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should get a little, get a little larger patch there. A little larger patch. <laughs> Man, these bacon bits are making me feel like soft cheese. Thank <laughs> you. 
um, the Sunday School Department wanted to make you some personalized gifts. So we have some personalized golf balls for Pastor Bolin. I have no idea how they're going to work because Promise pointed out that when you color them, it might change how they work. So good luck. I think you're also going to have to fight Navy for some because she's really in love with these. So... You guys aren't just good pastors. You guys are the best pastors. We appreciate you and love you. We are also happy that you're the pastors of this church. Hi. We love you, Pastor. We love you guys, and you guys are the best pastors, Sister Logan. Okay, that's fine. Can I say anything? You don't have to. That's okay. Go ahead. You can go ahead and give it to the pastor. Oh, Navy, come here. Navy, Navy. Oh. Right. <laughs> Woo. Here, can you put him in there? There you go. Excellent. That's okay. You guys can go ahead and each give them to him. Thank you, Navy. Well, for the record, Navy made one. She just liked all the others better. <laughs> you can have that one because she can have these. She has a dog named Mika. <laughs> all right, so I get the privilege of bringing up pastor and sister Diana and I get to call her sister Diana but she's actually my sister <laughs> so she's my sister sister Diana so the church wanted to give Diane Darren uh, we, we thought about the event planning what can we give them and we know that they cherish very personal things so we have put together a book of every picture of the Everyone that's sent in picture, we created this beautiful book. On the front, it says, we thank you. And it has pictures of different families in the church. There are a few pictures we're still missing. Um, so we have asked them to also to put in little notes beside them. And unfortunately, we, haven't, we just got it Friday, so we haven't had a chance for everyone to sign it. So we'll make sure we put it in the back of the church for those who have not yet got to sign, which is probably about half of everybody. Um, but we have got a few in here. So it's a really nice book with lots of pictures. And I'll show you, I'll show one so you can see the picture. Um, <laughs> well, as you can see, like there's pictures and you can write beside it. And if there, there's a few blank pages in the back. So if you don't have a picture in here, you can go ahead and claim a page and, and write on it. So we want to thank you for everything you've done. And this is a gift from the church as well for both of you. Well, thank you, everyone. I, this is... This is, uh, this is excellent. Thank you. This is, I, I was going to say beautiful, but that would be bragging. Um. <laughs> All right. The card says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over. And praying the Lord blesses you with giving heart in abundance measure. Thank you, your Blackwell Church family. And $250. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Do you have something else to say? Oh, okay. Um, also, thank you all for the gifts you've given us in the basket. I have it written down, and I'd like to say it next time, maybe next service or the next Sunday. But all of you that gave us gifts, um, some, one couple, Deanna and Jack gave us like three gift cards at different times. And so a lot of you all have given us gifts and gift cards, and we appreciate it so much. We love, love, love you all. Love you all. We wouldn't trade you for anything, anybody. Praise the Lord. Your first lady at Blackwell. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, since you're standing, why don't you take a moment and shake some hands around you and just kind of stretch out before we ask Brother David to come. Classes are dismissed. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. I'm so glad everybody's here today. And you guys look excellent. You know, when we talked about having a choir, there was this kind of a, this gut-wrenching thing that we would be singing to a just empty seats. And so many of you being here today proves that we don't sing to empty seats. Praise the Lord. There were people in them, and they were worshiping with us, and we thank you for that. Praise God. You know, Blackwell's a special place. It's been 22 years since we came to Blackwell uh, down the road, and God has done amazing things. We were, we were a young couple with very young children, and grace was just one. And our lives changed. I'm telling you, it changed, and changed for the better. God gave us a purpose, and without a vision, people perish. And God gave us a, a vision for that church to grow and to grow to this, and even greater. And we're, we're expecting even greater things. And I know it's going to happen because I look around and I see visionaries that stand with me. I see people who are full of the Holy Ghost, have a hunger and desire to serve God, that, that face obstacles obstacles without wavering uh, because the Bible says a man that wavereth he's, he's like a wave of the sea he's driven with the wind and tossed so when you stand and you face obstacles and you face situations and you don't waver you're doing the will of God and when you do the will of God you can as well watch out God is going to do amazing things when you're faithful with what God has given you he's going to give you even more and I'm thankful that I, I just see this church exploding. I see God doing great, marvelous things. And it's going to happen through you and through your family and your friends, and those people you work with and those people you come in contact with. God has blessed us abundantly with a wonderful congregation. And it makes it a whole lot easier to pastor. Praise the Lord. I'd be at a remiss today to um, not mention Pastor Andrew. Sister Tara, our youth pastors, let's, if they would stand, let's give them a big hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll get them a card or something. I've been a little busy. <laughs> Praise God. I'm so thankful for David and Grace. Um, it wasn't easy for Grace to go, but... Honestly, I knew that God was taking her to places that she was going to be, she was going to excel in. And uh, sometimes we, we are prepared f to move on uh, to, a, to, a mar to a marriage, you know, a prepared marriage. And she did, uh, she was always the one with her ear to the front to hear all the stuff about how to be a pastor and how to how to deal with the situations and I'm so thankful that that's where she's at today David serves us as a, a pastor at Medora and he is doing a, a fabulous job there that church is on fire and he's very involved in that and I'm grateful I'm grateful that I've got a young man that takes excellent care of my daughter and her babies or their babies so I want to invite Brother David Gill to come preach to us today. Can we give a hand clap unto the Lord right now in this place? Isn't he good? Hallelujah. And I wonder if just for a couple moments, if we could stand to our feet right now and give honor to your pastor and his wife. Aren't you blessed with the greatest pastor and pastor's wife? They are first class people, and I give them high honor. They're pretty great in-laws, I'll give them that, and I'm so thankful that they made a beautiful daughter in my wife and allowed her to come with me to Medora, a little redneck town, but I'm thankful to not only be here, to be asked to be here, but I'm thankful to be with family. Not just the family I married into, but Blackwell, I count you as my family. And I'm thankful to be with family tonight. If you'll open up your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 35. Before we do that, 
I know we usually pray after we read the word, but I want us to kind of get in connection with what God has already done in this service. The prophet said the half has not been told. And I've come to remind somebody tonight, God is not done just yet. So if we could just pray for just a few more moments to grab what God is trying to do in this place tonight. Father, we thank you for what you've done already. But God, we know that there is more yet to come. Lord, if you would just make us like the clay, and we know that we are in the potter's hand. God, make us malleable and make us ready for your will and your way. God, let your word come forward tonight, not on deaf ears or closed hearts, but God, make us ready. And Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 35 and verse number 6. And it says, but they said, we will drink no wine for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father commanded us saying, ye shall not drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Verse 7 says, neither shall ye build houses nor sow seed, nor plant vineyards, nor have any. And mark this next line in your Bibles. But all your days ye shall dwell in, everybody say, tents. That ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 10. We come to that famous story with Jacob. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Jumping down to verse 14. And Jacob set up a pillar. Everybody say pillar. In the place where he talked with him. Even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon. And he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him Bethel. One last verse in Psalms 23 and chapter 5. Thou preparest a table before me. I've come with the assignment tonight to preach this message. A tent, a pillar, and a table. If you'll open up, or if you'll put down your Bibles, excuse me, and we're going to pray one more time that God would have his way in this service Father, we know that it's Pastor Appreciation Sunday, but God, there is something happening in the supernatural right now. There is something happening in the unseen world, and God, I pray that you would prepare us. God, make us ready for a move. Make us ready for the next level, God. Prepare our hearts and prepare our minds for what the Word has for us in this place today. And the church says, Amen. You may be seated today. Like I said before, the prophet said in the Bible, the half has not been told. I believe that God is positioning this church for something great. Is there anybody that believes that tonight? That God is preparing you for something mighty. Because the Bible says in the last days that he's not going to open up a window of heaven. No, he said he was going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The Bible does not say that a river of living water shall pour out of your belly. But he said rivers of water shall pour out of your belly. And I've come to remind you, it cannot come out of your belly before it comes out of your mouth. If there is something stirring up in the soul of Blackwell. It's going to come out of your mouth. So if I wonder for just a few moments if you can lift up a shout in this place, a shout of readiness, a shout of readiness for revival because out of the soul of this church is coming something great. I understand that all we see in our world today is it's evil from within. We see the world around us as a world on fire. All you see on social media is this person is canceled because of something they said or so-and-so is canceled because of who they were with or who they were talking to. 
If you watch the news anymore, which honestly I just don't recommend, but if you watch the news anymore, all you see is Fox News is right and CNN is wrong, or how CNN is right and Fox News is of the devil. This world has nothing to show but its own evil. This world does nothing but bring pressure upon us, and let alone it brings pressure on the believer. The enemy has been busy, church. The enemy is working hard behind the scenes on what's going on not just in this world, but in this country. Now, I'm not here to get political because I don't believe that politics should be in the church, but I believe that the church should be in politics. Amen? However, there is a reason why the Bible says we don't face against flesh and blood, but we face against principalities. We face against powers and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And may I say that the church is not just up against them. They are up against spiritual wickedness in historical places. This world is against you, church. This world and this country is against what God is trying to do in this midst. The enemy is at work in our country. All of this brings pressure on the modern day church. We don't just receive pressure from this evil world. We receive it from our schools. Anybody receive pressure from your schools? You receive it from your jobs, from your families, from deadlines, let alone whatever the enemy is attacking you with. You receive pressure in your mind. You receive it in your body, in your marriage, in your finances. Does anybody feel pressure today? Some of you have walked into the house of God today not knowing if you're going to be able to handle another day because of the attacks that the enemy has put on you. Is there anyone in the house tonight that just feels that they've been attacked by the enemy, that they just feel like these past couple days it's been a bear to get through? Has there been anybody that's been attacked by the enemy? I know that we're supposed to be celebrating our pastor, but there's a reason that God has given us this assignment today. I believe that God is about to unleash a supernatural wave. And I wonder if someone in the house is going to receive a promise that they have been wanting, a promise that you've been praying for. Maybe you don't feel it just yet. Maybe you've been praying for it for months. Maybe you've been praying for it for weeks. But I believe that God is positioning this church. I felt it in the worship team this day. I felt it in praise and worship. God is positioning you for something greater. Can someone lift up your voices right now? If you believe that with me today. Some of you may have walked in today dreading life because of this season that you're in. How many know that life is full of seasons? Our life is dictated by seasons. All of us Hoosiers should know better than anyone else because we get all four seasons in one day. In the morning, it's 32 degrees with frost on the ground. By noon, we have a nice spring morning into a burning afternoon down to a nice fall evening like the one we enjoyed last night. My dad always tells it, says, if you don't like the weather in Indiana, give it about 20 minutes. It's probably going to change. I once heard the joke, and I, and I, I really like it. See, fall, does anybody really like fall? See, fall's my favorite season. And I, and I heard this joke that English people call this season autumn because it means something really special in the Greek to them. Yet over here, you know, like the winners of the Revolutionary War, we call it fall just because the leaves fall down. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm in a season right now. Some of you may be in a good season. How many are thankful that life brings us good seasons? Maybe you got that promotion you were hoping for to the students. We're coming up on holiday break here in a few more weeks. You finally get a break from school. I always look forward to that. But then there are the ones in whom God wants to hear this word today. And I want to preach to those who are in a season of despair. In a season of pain, of hurt, perhaps you're in a season that you don't know if you're going to make it to the next season. 
Perhaps you've become so numb that you don't even realize that seasons were supposed to change anymore. You thought that this was just your life now. That hurt has just become a part of your life. The attacks have been too much for you. The anxiety is getting to you. Depression has just become a part of you. Is there anyone like that in the house today? That disease that the doctors can't help you with, it's just become a part of you. That, that, That diabetes, you just live with it now. It's just become who you are. Webster defines season as a time characterized by a particular circumstance or feature. Some of you have a characteristic for the season that you're in, and you've labeled your season hurt. You've labeled it agony, or maybe you're in a season of misery, of abuse or addiction. Is there anybody that's dealing with that tonight? Maybe you're in a season I feel like it's never going to end. You've got to be real with yourself, church, but seasons change. I've come to remind you, some of us, us can no longer define our seasons because it's been our seasons that have defined us. You've been defined by your attacks. Some of you have been defined by your addictions, by your fear, by your hurt, by your worries, by your anxiety, by your depression. You've just lived with it for so long that you don't know any different. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself today. Maybe I'm preaching to a perfect church, but I know within myself there have been times in my life where I felt like I was labeled by what I dealt with. Just because the enemy has had his hand on your season right now does not mean that he gets to dictate when the season begins to change because I've come with a reminder from the Holy Ghost that seasons change. You may be in misery right now, but a season is going to change. You might be in pain right now, but your season, come on, somebody ain't going to help me in the house today. Seasons are going to change. Pain may be right now, but my joy comes in the morning. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord right now if you believe that. Brother John, can I borrow you really quick? Can I have you stand by everybody in, uh, uh, admonished by a really good tent right there, my wife, man. Can I have you stand by my tent, please? How many love Brother John? I'm so thankful that he's here. I believe that God is about to bring wind from heavens and that is going to be shifting some seasons. I believe that there is a wind coming from the north heaven that is about to come down into this place, about to change some situations that you've been dealing with. Does anybody believe that? Maybe I'm just, y'all ain't going to help me today. Somebody clap your hands if you believe that winds of change are about to come in the house. Well, like we read earlier, the prophet Jeremiah mentioned to the people that they would stay in tents. I'm not going to make you get in there. I'm just going to have you stand by it. I don't think, maybe, maybe my babies can fit underneath there. But the reason the prophet told the people to stay in tents is because tents were designed to be easily moved. He didn't want them to build houses where they were at because houses were too firm. They took too much work. They were too dedicated. When someone built a house where they were at, usually in those times they lived in that house until they died. They were too solid. The people of that time needed to be mobile at a moment's notice. Maybe you felt like you've been in a season for too long. Maybe it's been years since you felt a move of God in your soul. It is because you have been putting a house in the season that God has wanted you to put a tent. God has designed you to put tents in your season because seasons change. Some of you have housed yourself in fear. You have housed yourself in anxiety when God's said build a tent because your season is about to change the winds of change are about to come and you need to be ready to move somebody ain't going to help me today the winds are coming pick up your tents it's time for a move If we want to be a church of world-changing, one God-believing, soul-winning apostolics in a modern-day world, we're going to have to learn to build a tent for the seasons that will change. The devil has had his hand in your life for far too long. He's been throwing your past in your face for too long. Some of you have walked in the house hurt, but I believe you're going to walk out of here healed. You've walked in abused, but the shepherd is about to walk over you, and he's about to cover you, and he's about to heal. 
Daniel writes in chapter 2 and verse 21, and he changeth the time and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Psalms 30 and 4, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints, and give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life, weeping endureth for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody needs some joy in the house today. Pick up your tent of misery and take yourself to a place of joy. Just know this, church, if you're ready to go into another territory with God, you've got to tear down the house that you've built and pitch yourself a tent because this season is not your destination, but it is preparation for your salvation. I wonder if you believe right now, if you're dealing with a season right now, I want you to stand by faith in this house right now, and I want you to lift your hands. Come on, if you're dealing with the season, and lift your hands and declare it over yourself. God, let the winds of heaven blow and blow a season into my life. Come on, lift up your voices right now. Lift it up in this house. It's time for a shifting in the Holy Ghost. It's time for a change. Brother John, I want you to do something. It's going to be a little bit symbolic. I want you to pick this tent up. It's super light. I want you to start walking around this sanctuary. And this is going to be a symbol of this church that is about to pick up its tent and step into new territory. You're going to step into new Somebody declare it over your family. You're about to step into new places. You're about to step into new revelation. You're about to step into a new anointing. Somebody shout unto the Lord right now and declare it over your family. Declare it over your children. Declare it over your finances. Come on, lift him up. Lift it up right now. You don't need to have the strength of Samson to get out of your season. You just need the strength to be like Brother John and pick up your tent. The season that you're in right now doesn't dictate where God is going to take you. If he can bring a murderer like Saul into a place like Paul, he can take you and I into the season of miracles, into a season of prophecy, into a season of fulfillment, into a season of joy, into a season of peace, into a season of mercy, into a season of... Where's my help right now? Hallelujah, Jesus. God is giving you the option for redemption, and I've come with a reminder that there is a way out. I wonder right now, if you, everybody in this place, just move your hand like this. Move your hand like this. Say, David, what are we doing? You're moving your hand like a dial because God is about to shift the very nature of this church right now. I believe I'm working in the Holy Ghost right now. I believe that I can feel my help coming from heaven right now. I feel the shifting. I feel what God's trying to do. You've been dealing with hurt for too long. You've been dealing with misery. You've been feeling abused by because people have left you worrying. People have left you. People have walked away from you, and you're dealing with hurt right now. But God just moving your life right here like a dial and he is shifting the very nature of this church he is shifting the DNA he is shifting he is shifting your mindset but somebody has to pick up the tent and be ready for a move pastor can I have you come and stand by this pillar please how many are thankful for your pastor can you clap your hands and Your pastor stands as a shepherd over this church who then answers to the chief shepherd. Everybody say, that's God. Your pastor also stands as a pillar in this church. How many know that the church needs pillars? Well, you may ask, well, what is a pillar, David? A pillar once placed is a permanent statement unto the Lord. It is a permanent declaration unto God. One definition of a pillar is when we see that word in Genesis 35 with Jacob at Bethel. That word pillar means a bridge between heaven and earth. When Jacob saw the ladder, 
and he saw angels going up and down it. That word ladder also means a pillar. This man right here is your bridge to heaven. You need easy access to God, there's your bridge right here. If you need easy access to the God Almighty, that's your bridge right there. That is your pillar. There is a connection to heaven unlike any other. There are some times in life where the best way to get the victory is to have a tent, pick it up, and hit yourself up to the pillar. How many know you need your man of God if you're going to make it through this life? If you're going to make it through the seasons of life, I need a pillar that I can lean on. I need a pillar that I can trust. I need a pillar who's going to speak into my life. I need a pillar who's going to correct me. I need a pillar who's going to guide me. Pastor, do you mind grabbing a mic? I'm going to have your pastor read a, a couple verses of scripture. And when he does, I want you to be ready. Because where he is speaking from is a place called a pillar. What he's about to read are some pillar scriptures that we lean on. I want you to be ready to lift up your voice and get ready for the shifting. Because when the pillar begins to speak, he has got a connection from heaven unto earth. If you want your seasons to change, that's the only way it's going to happen. Is when we can take what's going on in heaven and we can bring it down here on earth. Pastor, can you read Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 4? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. All right, and one more time. Get ready, church, because this is, this is getting me a little bit excited. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 40, 54 and 55. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Come on. Death is swallowed up in victory. Uh -huh. O death, where, where is, is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Come on, somebody. That's your pillar speaking unto you. There is a hope that we have that is not in this world. There is a hope... There is a hope that you and I have that we don't have to trust on the things of this world. I don't have to trust what the news is saying. I don't trust what man has to say because I've got a pillar connected to heaven and he's preaching unto me. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Woo. Can I get the music up here to help me for a little bit? Thank you, Pastor. I wonder if one more time, if we can lift up our voices right now and get ready for a shifting. God is trying to do something in the supernatural, but you've got to be ready. You have got to be ready. I'm feeling a Holy Ghost move. I'm feeling an old time Holy Ghost move. Is there anybody that feels that with me? That feels an old holy time feeling in the Holy Ghost. This world may be shifting from day to day, but the Bible compares this world to shifting sand. But Jesus said in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is a pillar that I can look to, and it's still the same. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. I can look to that pillar. Come on, somebody. If you're wanting your seasons to change, it's going to take a pillar. I wonder if every eye is closed, every hand lifted, and every voice lifted right now. I want it to be from the very depths of your soul. If you're ready for your season to change, it's going to have to come from within you. It's going to have, Jeremiah said, it's a fire shut up in my bones. Jeremiah said that it's something amazing. It's something in me that I cannot contain, I cannot control. It's only going to be then when seasons are going to begin to change. Hey! Somebody lift your voices right now. Somebody shout it unto the Lord right now in this place. Come on. Somebody help me right now in this house. Somebody begin to worship him. Somebody declare it unto him. Hey, when I think of his goodness and all he has done for me, my soul cries out and it cries out a hallelujah.
God's going to have to take somebody serious if you're ready for a shifting. Maybe you're not even in a bad season. You're in a good season. But I'm ready to step unto the next level. I'm going to read a couple verses of Scripture. And I'm going to need the music behind me because my voice is about to leave this body. But when we do... We're going to lift up a voice unto the Lord that's going to sound like all of heaven. Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 1. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, ye. Call upon his name and declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things and is known in all the earth. Come on, throw that next verse up there. Somebody say and cry. Come on, somebody help me right up. And cry and shout. Somebody shout it out right now. Shout now, inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One, and the Israel in the midst of thee cry out. Hey! Mm. Perhaps that's not enough for you. You need a pillar in your time of need. When the devil comes after me, I can trust in the word of the Lord my connection will bring me through here O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord when I read that it's not just revelation it's a pillar I can hook on to it's a pillar I can lean on it's a pillar I can look at that same spirit that moved in the early church in Acts chapter 2 that was a pillar moment but the same spirit that swept in the upper room is about to sweep in the house today. Everybody say, it's a wind. It's a wind. It's a wind. Mm, I feel a Holy Ghost wind about to blow through this place. Somebody, you need to get off your mind, off your storm. Get your mind off the enemy and turn that dial and know if God be for me, who can be against me? For the Lord is my strong tower in whom shadow I can run to. If you allow me on this Pastor Appreciation Sunday, I'm going to take a few more minutes and I'm going to get out of the way and we're going to let God sweep into this house. I'm going to have a pillar of this church take a moment and pray. I'm going to have Pastor come up in just a minute and he's going to pray over this church and he's going to pray over this house. Pastor, if you'll be making your way. And I'm believing that when this man begins to pray, that God is about to unleash the winds of change into this church. He's about to unleash the winds of change into your family, into your finances, into your marriage. God is about to use this moment like he did at Bethel with Jacob. And one commentary says, revival is not receiving something new in our spirit, but it's when we stir up what's been already placed. This is a revival church, but it's time we start stirring that water up. Here comes the stirring. Pastor, when you begin to pray, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want you to speak with a tongue that is not your own. And church, I want you to join in because like a funnel from heaven, God is about to pour into your man of God and he's going to pour into you. Pastor, pray to this church. Oh Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. We praise you, oh God, for you are more than conquered. You are more than all, oh God, that we can give or ask, oh Lord. We plead the blood over every person in this place. Lord, that the Holy Ghost will rise up within them in the move of your spirit. So rich, so free, oh God. We'll rise up against the enemies, oh God, of our souls. We plead the blood, Lord. We plead the blood, Lord, that you will pour out provision and blessing and 
victory and power. And we ask God that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will fall. It will fall upon. Come on, church. You are stepping into a new season. If you got to literally take a step, then get ready. Get ready because you've got to pick up the tent, hitch up to your pillar because the next step is coming. The next step is coming. You say, David, well, you've been talking about a tent and you've been talking about a pillar, but what's the next step? What's the table got to do with it? Well, I'm glad you asked because I feel a shifting in the room. It's time you pick up your tent, and when you do that, and you get up next to the Word of God and your man of God, the shifting is coming. Your house is shifting. Your marriage is shifting. Your season is breaking. Your weeping turns into joy. Your anxiety turns into affirmation. Your mourning turns into dancing. Your pain turns into praise. Shout it out, thou inhabitants of Zion. Because the next step in Psalms 23, can you please put that verse up? We like to think of it. I'm sorry if you can't see me. I know I'm short. We like to think of it, Psalms 23, we always think of, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And that's a great verse. I read it all the time. But the next one is where I want us to get our revelation from. Thou preparest me a table. But he doesn't just prepare you a table. Because you need to understand that it is the Lord Almighty that prepares the table but he prepares it in the presence of your enemies. He prepares this table. Notice there's only one chair. Your enemies don't get a seat at the table, but it's just you, and you will be in the presence of the Lord. Somebody needs to get ready to take their seat at the king's table. You are going to sit, and you're going to sit in peace. Your mind's been attacking you. Once you're at the table, your enemies will look on you, but they can't attack you. They can't get to you. They can't touch you. They can't come at you. Somebody lift up your voices right now at this place. Somebody take that hand and start turning the dial in this place. Turn that dial in the place right now. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift it unto the Lord right now in this place right now. Come on and shout it unto the Lord in this house. It's time to get out of your mess and take yourself to the table. Take your seat that's rightfully yours. You have a name on your chair, and it is waiting for you. Because when he does that, when you step into your seat, this is not the end of your story. Because it says in the next verse, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Pick up your tent, get next to the pillar, take your seat, and watch goodness and mercy. Somebody shout it out in this house right now. Shout it unto the Lord. There's a shifting in the room. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name.
Are you ready for that day? Have you been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. I ask you to think on those things. Get your heart and mind on the Lord right now as we close this service. Would you raise up your hands to the Lord? Would you cry out to God one more time? Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Word of God has come forth today. And a lot of times we hear the Word of God and they say, that was good, man. That was, and basically saying, that was entertaining. We, we really like that. When it, it, It's not entertaining. It, it's not the purpose of the Word. It can be funny. It can be moving. But the purpose is that it initiates something within us to follow the truth of it. And the truth of today's word is that there is availability for a change in the direction you're going in. You can have peace when you think there's no way I can have peace. I'm here to differ with you. There, you can have peace. It's, I need prosperity. Well, I agree with you. You can have prosperity. You can be blessed. I need a healing. Well, I agree with you. You can have a healing. Amen. And I, I got any main mans in the house? Because that's what the word says. So dial in the change. Dial in the change. One more time, would you just say, God, dial me in? I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for a shifting. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd like to make available to you an in home, at your place, or at the church, or at my house, a Bible study. And uh, I'd be happy to teach that to you. If you're uncomfortable with me teaching, I can arrange for someone else to teach you that Bible study. That is Holy Ghost filled and is ready to teach. Hallelujah. So if you're ready, we're ready. God bless you today. Let's pray. Father, we pray the Holy Ghost be on this congregation and on these people today. What a blessing they have been in my life. What a blessing.